So as you guys all seen, the 2024 Dark Horse has made an appearance onto the scene and interwebs all over the place. So what's this video about? What's some other Joe Schmo talking about it for, right? Well, to be honest, I am a little bit disappointed by it. And I'll tell you why. Right off the bat, the masculinity of the Dark Horse is amazing though. I will say, it looked great in person. I love that color. The wheels look great on it. Everything about that specific one they had there, which happens to be the most expensive, is really, really nice. But here's the ugly truth about it. The ugly truth is the price. The price is way too much for what they're charging. And I'll tell you why. So imagine one day you're coming home from work, you got that fat raise, maybe a fat bonus, right? You're like, damn man, I'm feeling good. I'm gonna treat myself. You log on, you look at the actual price of the car, only to find out that it's a whopping $72,000. <laughs> I mean, that's M3 money, that's, you know, RS, that's more than RS3 before market adjustments. One thing that's really weird about the whole Dark Horse is that you have a price right here for a Dark Horse appearance package. What? what? It's, it's a freaking Dark Horse. It's not going to look like that. You got to pay an extra five grand to make it look like that. If anything, it just looks like another Mustang then. It, it's the silliest thing ever. When the average cost of a car in the United States is now $40,000, it makes you wonder if the blue collar dream of cheap horsepower and having fun is no longer existent. It kind of makes it difficult to justify these prices for new vehicles. So really the only people getting them are people that know people, people that are collectors and are gonna hold on to it for 10 or 15 years and you'll never see one in the light of day and sell it for a billion dollars in the future. Or you'll get one second hand used in 10 years, I don't know, and then by then there'll be something even better out. So you're in this constant debate and limbo state, perhaps, I should say. For instance, Cars and Bids. Cool website, I think Doug DeMuro uh, created it or helped design it and everything. And this is real world data of what people have actually paid personally for cars. So I'm gonna type in a GT350 and we're gonna find out what previous cars have gone for. And as you can see, anywhere from $45,000 to $65,000 is a sweet spot. And honestly, it's one of the best cars that Ford has ever released. In my opinion, it will still be better than the Dark Horse. It has more power than the Dark Horse. It has literally the same transmission, the same type of suspension setup that they did back in, what, 2016 when it first came out, that they're rolling over into the Dark Horse. In my opinion, there's not enough new or cutting edge or differentiations between the GT350 and the Mach 1 to make it worth $72,000. Granted, it's a new platform and has a new engine per se, um, but it's just not, it's not enough. It really isn't. Back, go back even a few years uh, on the Gen 2 Mustangs, you can get one for like forty dollars to $45,000 out the door that's supercharged and has like 650 horsepower with the factory warranty. Now, how does this justify that? I just don't think it does. <laughs> but, you know, it's a beautiful car. I'm sure it'll handle great. I'm excited to see the reviews. It was nice to see in person and just to go to the event and be a part of it. But that's my big gripe with it. I think the price is astronomically high. Even for the S650 Mustang, just as the base GT, you're talking about a $50,000 Mustang before markups, before taxes, dealer fees, dock fees, everything, right? That's just like, for some people now, the average person, it's it's just unattainable. It, it is, you'll have to think twice or wait much longer. If not, we'll be into crippling debt like the rest of society is anyway, so why not? <laughs> Cheers.